as a first time mom, I was quite ignorant about a lot of things. In fact, let me start from getting pregnant. I knew I wanted a, ba a baby. That was all I knew, okay? I, wa I, wa I want a baby, I'm trusting God for a baby. But what it entailed, I did not know. Let me introduce ya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, hi. It's your first time here. My name is Adenike or Oluwiesha. On this channel, I create interesting, amazing content, fashion, lifestyle, motherhood. So if you're interested in those things, please subscribe to the channel, thumbs up this video, check out my other videos, and let me know down below in the comment section that you are a new subscriber. All right? Thank you. Okay, so today we're going to have this conversation about breastfeeding. And yes, it is brought about by the conversation that Aka and Claire had and they posted on um, Instagram, right? Which was, it's been a while now, but you know what? If I haven't spoken about it, the conversation has not ended. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right, so they posted this video of both of them having this, it was like an argument. It wasn't an argument, it was a conversation. They were having a conversation about an argument that they had about the old breastfeeding thing. You know, they just had a baby and all of that. And you know, I was watching that video and I was like, oh, <laughs> new parents, oh, welcome on board. <laughs> because naturally, see, I know a number of new parents and I know it is natural, myself inclusive, I know that it is natural during those first few months to have some misunderstandings and clashes here and there and yes even though my husband might have been away and we might have been apart for the first couple of i think what four months see it didn't mean that we were agreeing on everything even over the phone even on video call do you get so when i saw that i was just like oh <laughs> but then i read through comments and i was like hmm i do I, I do have a few things to say you know about the video about um breastfeeding now see as a mom as a first time mom i was quite ignorant about a lot of things in fact let me start from getting pregnant i knew i wanted a, ba a baby that was all i knew okay I, wa I, wa I want a baby i'm trusting god for a baby but what it entailed i did not know what was going to come with it the choices i would have to make i, I, I had no clue i was very very ignorant and naive right about a lot of things because conversations Topics weren't being discussed with me. Conversations weren't being had with me. I was left to figure it out. My oh, that's how it happens. That's how you know you should experience it. There were a lot of things I just kind of left like oh you know just go through it and you know don't say anything about it, which is a bad culture by the way. Hence why I'm always eager to have this conversation because you young people, or oh, I say you young people. <laughs> I mean young girls that don't have kids yet you need to know the choices that are available to you so as a pregnant woman you know as a first-time pregnant woman as a as a first-time pregnant woman and as a first-time mom there were lots of things that i did not know one of which was breastfeeding i did not know that i had an option okay not to breastfeed it, it, the, the option wasn't presented to me do you get it? it wasn't like oh um would you breastfeed or would you formula feed do you get it was oh you're breastfeeding and i was like yes i'm breastfeeding <laughs> you know it wasn't until it was getting close to my due dates and you know i was watching some videos on youtube i was watching some new moms as well talk about their experiences and i was like wait listen uh is that if there's there's something i didn't i didn't know i thought breastfeeding was automatic okay i didn't know there was an issue of not producing milk i didn't know there was an issue of your baby not latching on you know, I didn't know women go through all of that, right? They, they, they didn't tell me. They only told me, you are going to breastfeed. And I was like, yes, I'm going to breastfeed. <laughs> you know, they didn't tell me that it's possible that, um, you know, maybe your baby might not latch on for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, you might have to formula feed. Maybe you might not produce milk or the, uh, you know, the first, that first thing that comes out within like the first, couple of days that the baby feeds on before the actual milk starts to come out. I've forgotten what it's called now. 
um, I wasn't told all of that. I had to figure it out on my own, very close to my due date. But as at the time I figured it out, I had already decided that, you know what, I was going to breastfeed. So it was just more like for informational purposes. It was more like, oh, I pray, you know, um, my baby latches and I pray that, you know, I produce milk and all of that. So what I started doing was to be eating foods that will, this was before delivery, that would encourage my milk to come, you know, oatmeal, pap, this, that, milk. I was just, I didn't take lactation cookies at all, do you get? So um, I was just doing all of that, eating all of that, and even after, and you know, I didn't have any issue with my baby latching on, it latched on immediately, and it fed, which was very painful. See, <laughs> they don't even tell you how painful breastfeeding is. Um, you know, and then eventually after the first couple of days, um, uh, my milk came and it was just, it was just rosy, right? But the point is, it is just as easy, yeah, for a woman not to produce milk. So no fault of hers. Do, do, do you get, like, I, I've carried this baby for nine months, okay? You think that I will do any, I will, I will, I will put myself in a situation where my baby will not be able to feed do, do you get what like it doesn't make sense so when people try to guilt women who are unable to produce milk or maybe even produce enough right um it, it's just sad and those people are just ignorant do you get so there it's possible that your baby might not even latch on it's very very possible that your baby will not but like the nurse the lactation nurse had to come to show me how to position the baby and then my sister was there and she was helping as well and how to, but he was just so he just he just like but some people some babies don't some babies latch and they suck 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 and nothing comes out and it is not the fault of the mom do you understand so the, 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 there are these these things i figured out after you know almost at the end tail end of my pregnancy and after delivery there were things i knew before and these are things that women should know that you know you have a choice right okay so um, I chose to breastfeed because, of course, I could breastfeed, that's one. And two, um, they say that breastfeeding, WHO, doctors, even when I went for his very first appointment, when when I was at the hospital, and when I just had him, everybody was just asking, are you breastfeeding or you're going to use formula? When I went for his doctor's appointment, the very first doctor, are you breastfeeding? Oh, that's good. But uh, there's just this whole celebration about breastfeeding, which they say, you know, it helps build, boost up the immune system of the baby and all of that. But, and that's great, you know, I'm happy I breastfed. But again, if you are unable to, you are doing everything you can, you're not producing milk, you're, you have eaten lactation cookies, you have done this, you have drank all the pop you can drink in this world, drank custard, drank and boses, you know, and you it's it is not your fault, okay? Okay, good. Now, on to the conversation between Aka and Claire. That conversation was interesting, right? And it was interesting in a lot of ways, but I think one, just shout out to them for posting it in the first place, for, be, for being vulnerable enough to post, to record it, or even having that conversation in the first place, because clearly they had an argument before, and it was just kind of like, which was apparently intense, and apparently was not like, oh, they were not having a conversation about that argument, right? So for them to even be matured enough to sit down and say, okay, this was, this was what happened. This is the miscommunication we are having, right? I mean, I applaud Aka for being strong for his wife and everything and for being there and for, you know, trying to help her understand that they are a team and all of that. And that is great. But at the end of the day, eh? I mean, shout out to my husband. He is amazing. He's incredible. From the day he stepped into the US, he's been hands-on as much as he can, right? He's doing his best every day. He's learning every day. However, there's only so much a man can do. There's only so much. There is only so much you can do. Like, you can, no matter how much support you are saying, oh, we're a team, we're a team, like Haka was saying, she's still the one going through the pain. You are not feeling the pain. You're not, do you know how painful that thing is before it becomes not painful at least one month and you are dealing with pain down there you are dealing with the pain up here do you understand you are dealing with the pain up here so it's a pain everywhere like alone that woman is trying to survive 
she's trying to save her life because she's in so much pain. People don't tell you these things. People just, they just post pictures and think it's all rosy. No, because they, they, an, a being, a human being just came out of your body. Every, every minute thing in your body has been readjusted, okay? Has gone through a reawakening. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So the woman at that point, after just having that baby, whether through VD or CS or whatever, that woman is just trying to stay alive at that point, okay? She's trying not to fall into depression. She's trying to heal. She's trying to stay alive. And then she's breastfeeding. And then you're going to come and say, let's create a plan. Have you pumped today? Are you well? <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> not, not because it shouldn't ask as a reminder but I know okay if I haven't pumped today I haven't pumped today listen like Claire said I preferred my baby feeding directly from me I did like pumping because even pumping was more painful than him feeding directly when that suction should I show you guys this right here when that suction do that film <laughs> all the muscle in your brain will fall it's a false reset. Do you get what I mean? It is painful. So, personally, for like the first two months, I was in pumping. I was not. It wasn't until the third month. And they don't even advise you pumping immediately because they want your baby, they want you to teach your baby to learn how to feed. Okay? And not to feed from bottle. To feed only from you. So that by the time they start feeding from bottle, they can tell the difference, you know, and they can understand that, okay, there are different methods of feeding. Okay, that's your point. So that was what I did. So for the first few months, I wasn't pumping. I was feeding directly. By the third month, I was pumping every other day because I really could not be bothered. I was pumping. I had enough milk. You, do, you, do you understand that? He was drinking from, I wasn't going out. It wasn't as if I was going to resume work anytime soon. You do at, at the time. So I wasn't pumping. So when I started pumping, it was every other day because it was so painful. And I, I knew, you know, we're going to probably have to go interstate at some point. So I didn't want to build a start of milk that I was going to waste. And I was always home. But guess what? If I show you my freezer right now, the half. It's milk. I had to stop pumping because we, we shall keep food inside freezer. And this is not a place where we have an additional freezer or anything. That's the only freezer, you know, the fridge freezer that we have. And half of it is milk. And the starch that I have right now, I built after the fourth month. Yeah. I built so all those things of oh you should, you should uh, stock up stock up stock up stock one month I mean it's good but if you can't then you can't I didn't it was after the fourth month that I started building a stash for okay when um when his teeth comes out you know the bottom one has come out when the upper one comes out I've heard that it's even going to be more painful because it's going to turn my nipple into experiments of biting and see I've, I've, I've just with enough pain i don't want more <laughs> so i'm building a starch for when that time comes i can just say okay take your bottle feed yourself you know the, 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 these babies they're good <laughs> do you get what i'm saying that's what my plan is but it wasn't it wasn't like so since asked me down and said okay um we're going to make a plan okay so how many times are you going to be going to be pumping by the no, no, no. It's just now I was breastfeeding and that's it. Is the boy feeding? Okay, great. Do, do you get, I mean, he also wanted me to breastfeed and I was like, yeah, no, nah, naturally I'll breastfeed. This was when I was pregnant. Naturally I'll breastfeed and all of that. But we didn't go, it wasn't, it wasn't a topic of argument. After, after like the second month, my mom was telling me, once you give me formula, it's tired, you know, look at your face. You're looking tired. You better buy formula. She was already telling me that. She, she become, my mom was like, yeah, two months, it's okay. You wear yourself out, you know. I was just because it's sucking for me. But I was like, no, I want to do six months, I want to do six months. And then you know, I was able to do six months before I started him on solids and you know and all of that. So uh so in essence I'm saying that at the end of the day it still comes down to the woman. Do you get the best men can do is just try to be supportive. Yes, if you read something and you hear something from the doctor and whatever, I'm not saying 
that means your baby as well do you get but don't try to act as if you can feel the pain that the woman is feeling because we can't and another thing that happened in that conversation was that there was a lot of there was a, a misunderstanding and you know Aka was trying to no sorry Claire was trying to tell Aka that this is what I hear when you tell me this and Aka kept saying well do you know that's not what I mean you know and funny thing is that's the kind of conversation myself and Tosi have had before because you know I kept saying see when, when you say certain things of course that has to do with raising a baby and all of that and you know feeding him and whatnot um, and I was like, you know, when you say certain things, it makes me feel a certain way. You like, like Claire said, you don't come and say you have no pumps. Do you, do you get like, you know, like there's a way you say because you know that I'm doing the best I can, you know. And if you don't know, then you should know that in as much as you care about this baby, I care about this baby as well. You know, it's 50 50. So you have to be like, choose your words wisely, you know, don't be accusatory of. Of me, you know, don't if, if you mean say what you mean, how you mean it. Don't don't say it a way and then expect me to read the meaning for you. I don't have I'm I'm barely holding on. I don't have time to start interpreting your statements. Do you understand? So the best men can do is to be as helpful as they can, as present as they can, you know, and as understanding of the reality which is that i don't know what you're feeling i can't feel your pain you know i can't say i understand what you're going through but what i can do for you because you both are the loves of my life what i can do for you is just make myself available to you okay let me know what you need when you need it how you need it okay that's not to say you cannot make suggestions or Oh, we went to the doctor. The doctor said this. What do you think? Should we do this? Should we do that? Let's have a conversation. Don't come and now say, okay, yes, this, this is how we must do it and that's final. Don't go out to work and come back and see the baby sleeping and think that's what the baby has been doing all day and I'm just lying around, just farting around doing nothing. Do you understand? Or don't go out and come back and the baby's shirt is dirty and you think that shirt has been dirty all day. And you're like, oh, but why is he wearing a sh dirty shirt? What do you mean why is he wearing a dirty shirt? Am I blind? Can't I see that it is dirty? I can see that it is dirty. So the fact that I haven't changed it means a thousand and one things. Do you understand? So men need to under and you know, see, let me even tell you, the toll breastfeeding takes on you. So men need to just just back off. Understand that they have it easy and appreciate the gift that is a woman because women are kings women are like incredible how what am i saying a quarter of the pain that women feel through breastfeeding alone men can probably not take it <laughs> before saying okay do this and they're gone i know i haven't said a few things but that's because i want you to say some of those things as well i didn't come here to say everything you to say your own in the comment section okay <laughs> thank you so much for watching i love you guys so much please subscribe to the channel if you aren't if there are other topics motherhood breastfeeding pregnancy that you want me to talk about then please go ahead and let me know in the comment section okay i'll gladly share my experience with you and let you know what i think so let's learn <laughs> and let you know what i think on those topics okay thank you so much for watching i pray god blesses you your homes your marriages your relationships most importantly i pray god blesses you really god and god bless you Mwah. bye mm. gp oh thumbnail <laughs>